Welcome to our first ever 8-Brit Debate, live from my dining room, brought directly to you. I'm Thomas Roach. Joining me tonight is Adam Bennett, Matthew Stevens, and Tom Pouter. Tonight's question, which current generation console would you recommend? Tonight's format, each of our candidates will deliver an opening statement. I will then ask them questions which they'll all be given a certain time period to answer and then they'll give a closing statement. First, Adam Bennett with his opening statement on Xbox One. Well, I'm here to explain why I reckon the Xbox One is a better investment for your cash than the other two consoles that are on offer tonight. To say that the Xbox One had a troubled infancy would probably be a bit of an understatement. To many gamers, the X-Bone was about as desirable as the u yard due to its DRM and always online features. But what's happened since is something that's showcased not just Microsoft's underestimated ability to adapt to the market, but also many gamers' unfortunate inability to forgive and forget. The Xbox One has gone from a laughing stock to a common sight in millions of living rooms all over the world, and it's going to get even better. An IGN list of confirmed games for E3 2015 shows three PlayStation exclusives, five Nintendo exclusives, and eight Xbox One exclusives. And that's just what we know will be confirmed. If you buy an Xbox One now, you'll get access to a great back catalogue of critically acclaimed games like the Master Chief Collection, Sunset Overdrive, or In the Blind Forest, none of which are available on Wii U or PS4. But you'll also get access to an outstanding lineup of future games. Crackdown, Gears of War, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Scalebound to name just four, I have never been more confident that the classics of the future are on Xbox One. Do yourself a favour, and don't let yourself miss out. Now, Tom Poucher with his opening statement for the PlayStation 4. 22.3 million consoles sold worldwide since November of 2013. Hardware that allows for crisp, native 1080p graphics. The fastest selling console of all time? Bring together those three impressive facts and you get only one name. The PlayStation 4. Now some of my opponents tonight will try and tell you that the facts don't matter. That numbers just aren't important. But the problem is when your numbers are as middling as those, it's important for all the wrong reasons. My opponents will try and skirt around the fact that their machines just aren't delivering. But all you need to know is that the PlayStation 4 is a runaway success. That's no coincidence. With the strongest hardware, the most competitive price point, and a rich, colourful library of first-party developers, PlayStation is certainly the place where greatness awaits you. And finally, Matt Stevens with his opening statement for the Nintendo Wii U. Now, I'm not going to come here and tell you all these facts and figures that you know my competitors will be telling you about their consoles. I'm going to be telling you what they actually think about the Wii U. Now the Wii U, of course, has some fantastic games on its lineup. We're looking at Mario Kart 8, we're looking at New Super Mario's U, we're looking at Luigi U, you know, 3D World, Smash, Wind Waker, High Wars, Splatoon, Monster Hunter. I mean, there's too many to say. It's just a fantastic lineup. But my competitors and myself, we love playing multiplayer games together in the same room, local multiplayer. Now, some of you might think that's a thing of the past, but let me tell you, games such as Super Smash Bros, games such as Mario Kart 8, and games such as Splatoon, these are the perfect examples of multiplayer games that they also love, and they would say are their favourite games. My uh, competitor, Adam Bennett, one of his favourite games, Mario Kart 8. My competitor, Tom Powter, one of his favourite games, Super Smash Bros. Need I say more? But, here's the thing, there's also a, pleth a plethora of games that are still to come out that are going to just blow your minds. Such as Mario Maker. We finally get a, a game where you can make Mario levels. How amazing is that? Zelda U. I mean, it's Zelda. What do I need to say about that? Star Fox. Yoshi, Willy World, which looks stunning. You know, Extended Blade Chronicles X. Fantastic games. Need I say more? How has your chosen console utilised improvements in technology to improve the gaming experience? We'll start with you, Tom Pabster. 
Well, that's a great question, Tom. Um, put it this way, Sony have learned from their past mistakes. They are building on ground that wasn't too well received in the PS3 generation. The PS3 used something called the cell processor, which basically meant the developers didn't know how to use it, and as a result, less games came out for the system. PS4, they chucked that out of the window. That's a leap in technology. They're utilising it better to make better hardware that just simply works better. The PS4 has 8GB of GDDR5 RAM, which basically means it runs faster than anything these guys have produced. The actual console itself is very developer friendly, with many developers coming out and saying this is absolutely fantastic, considerably better than the PS3, which I think is basically the biggest, uh, most important thing here. That's the biggest improvement. Alongside that, Sony have also innovated uh, with the controller, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. We're going to start with the online space, something that Sony perhaps didn't do so well uh, in the last gen, and they've changed it up big time. They've improved the uh, infrastructure of the entire thing. PlayStation Network is now just as good a place to play, if not better, than Xbox Live. And uh, essentially, Sony have you know, just made the PS4 a considerably better machine all round. Hey, Matt Stevens. Well, I'm not going to you know, stand here and say that the Wii U has amazing technical, uh, technical features. It doesn't. But here's what it does have. It uses what it has in the best ways possible. We're looking at fun ways to play games. You know, you've got the Wii U gamepad, you've got two screens. You know, what other console has that? It uses different ways. You know, it uses all the motion control that, um, that the Wii had, and it's implemented that also in the gamepad. Now, of course, the graphics-wise, not fantastic. But what it does do with those graphics, with the games that it has, makes it look stunning. It does have, you know, HD, so... Okay, and Adam Bell. Uh, well, it's good to see Matt applauding the Wii U's HD capabilities, Nintendo really stepping into 2015 there. I think one of the things about the Xbox One, uh, yes, it is a huge graphical leap from the last generation, and you see that in the frame rate as well, but I think what's more important about the Xbox One, and actually I would include uh, Sony's PlayStation 4 in this as well, is that it doesn't abuse new technology for the sake of it. When you do that, you get the Wii U. You get a console that innovates for the sake of innovation, and when you do that, you get a console that third-party developers do not support, and you don't get any games. Now the debate is open for you guys. I'd like to jump in first, if that's all right. I think one of the more interesting things that we've seen so far in the first eight brick debate is the fact that uh, Mr. Pouter, representing the PlayStation 4, so far in this entire debate has not mentioned a video game in his opening statement or otherwise, and I think that's quite telling. I think that's quite emblematic of a smug attitude surrounding the PlayStation 4 that aims to bamboozle people with numbers. And yes, it's working, but what matters most isn't questions like who's innovated the most or who, who's got the most kind of RAM, gig, whatever. What matters is what console are you going to enjoy playing most? What console has got the best games? That console is the Xbox One. Well, before we move on, I'd just like to point out that I think it's interesting that Adam Bennett starts questioning the format of the debate when things start not going his way. Um, I think the fact that I haven't mentioned a video game yet is telling. They're yet to come. Just like most of our video games, except maybe the Wii U, they're all here and that's about its library of about five games. But um, I was actually going to start my point, uh, Adam, with thanking you for bringing up a sensible point about innovation and needing, not to, needing to know when to not innovate. Um, I think that's very true. Very true. The PS4 and the Xbox One have done a good job of kind of sublimely improving their consoles. You know, they haven't made the, they haven't, well I don't want to say the jump that Wii's made to the Wii U, because it's not really jumped so much as it's falling down the stairs backwards. But, um, you know, the thing is, basically what I think we have here is two games consoles that they've improved things for the better. And one games console <laughs> that simply hasn't. Uh, and I think that shows. PS4, yes, is selling incredibly well, and the Xbox One is absolutely nothing to sniff at. The Wii U, however, Matt, unfortunately, is not performing. Now that I can get a word in. Ben, I entirely agree with your uh, argument. Good, let's wrap to, this up. <laughs> to, uh, to, to Tom. But however, I must say that gaming... What is the point of gaming? Is the point of gaming developing these uh, consoles that have ridiculously overpowered uh, consoles, but just and that's it. The point of gaming is the game. 
Yes, but it's quite game. puzzling to see you saying that, Matt, here supporting the Wii U, which doesn't have the library of games that it needs to be competitive. No, but is it about quantity or is it about quality? It's about quality, yes. It's about quality. The quality of games on the Wii U. I would just like to interject very quickly about your point about, about quality. Uh, I did a little bit of research on Metacritic before arriving. Um, the Wii U, now there's this kind of idea floating around, the Wii U has an absolute dump truck load of above average games. Its highest rated game on Metacritic is Mario 3D World at a very respectable 93. The second highest rating game is Super Smash Bros. at 92, should be higher. And then below that is Bayonetta 2 at 91, and that is the end of the Nintendo exclusive games in the 90s. Sony's PlayStation 4 has two exclusives in the 90s, The Last of Us Remastered and Bloodborne. And may I remind you that the PS4 and the Xbox One have been out a whole year less. Well, The Last of Us Remastered isn't a PlayStation 4 exclusive, is it? This is well, it's a PlayStation well, well, The exclusive. Last of Us... It's a PlayStation yeah. exclusive. Yeah, but you don't need to buy a PS4 to play that game. Very true, very true. At least our remakes work, <laughs> but we'll get into that later. <laughs> Matt? Yep. <laughs> Well, that's stirring <laughs> stuff from Matt. Um, I think just on the point of, because I think we, we're deviating wildly off the original question that was asked, um, I'd like to come up on Bloodborne, um, which, as Tom points out, is just about the only PlayStation 4 exclusive of any note. Um, well, that's not quite true. It's, it's, it's kind of come to this point where I, I feel like it's a case of the Emperor's New Clothes with Bloodborne. It's the kind of thing that you can't, you can't uh, critique it because it has this bubble of critical hype around it. But that, that critical hype isn't quite so impenetrable as you may, you may think. Dan Stapleton, who's IGN's executive editor in charge of games, explains in an article entitled How and Why Bloodborne Lost Me that the game is hindered by terrible design choices that make Bloodborne openly hostile to new players. And that is actually at the core of why I think the Xbox One is the best console. It's because it's the most balanced. There is something for everyone on the Xbox One. You want local multiplayer, we've got it. You want immersive open world experience, you want it. You want classic games, remastered in HD, you've got them. Can you name a, uh, a, a just you wheel off a couple of local player, multiplayer games for me? I think uh, uh, Rayman Legends is very enjoyable. Mo uh, Mortal Kombat X is one of the oh, highest rated. Also on the Forza, Forza, Forza Horizon 2 is probably the one of the highest rated racing games to come out in recent years. I'm not saying that they're all exclusive to Xbox One. I'm saying that the only place to play them all is the Xbox One. I would disagree. And I think that shows in my just random selection of just exclusives, man. Mind you, two of those games, Bennett and Points, that are third party games that aren't exclusive. The Last of Us Remastered, Bloodborne, Resogun Heroes, Infamous Second Son, all of which vastly different games. May I just point out quickly, The Last of Us Remastered is a third person uh, survival horror game, kind of story driven linear, Bloodborne action RPG, Resogun is an arcade shooter with local multiplayer and online, and Infamous Second Son is a story driven single player game. All very different, then you throw in a slew of third parties that you so greatly pointed out for me, and I think you'll find we have a far more balanced an actually better table than the Xbox One, because unfortunately none of the Xbox One's games penetrated the 90 mark, or even Blind Forest being the highest. Right, but of course... I'm just, I'm just interested to know why you think the Xbox is the best place to play this balance when the PS4 clearly has the more and more. I, do, I, I, don't, I just don't agree. I just don't agree. There is more games on the Xbox One, and there will be more games on the Xbox One. I'm going to take you back to that figure I quoted in my opening speech again. Five Wii U exclusive games confirmed for E3, three PlayStation 4, and eight Xbox One. Now, that's just what we know at the minute. Yes, PlayStation 4 might come out and blow us out of the water with exclusives that we didn't see coming. But are you going to bank on that? No. No, of course not. There's more games coming out for Xbox One. If you want to buy a console for the future, that console's the Xbox One. Well, I just want to say, just in, just in response to that, really, this is very much a Microsoft mentality. As we saw last year's E3, Phil Spencer, trying to make up for the apparently atrocious events of the E3 before that, came out with, look at all these games. But as we've literally just said, quantity doesn't mean quality. In fact, it can be the complete antithesis of quality. As I've shown you already, most of the Xbox One exclusives are a middling at best in terms of review scores. Your fabled Master Chief Collection still doesn't work almost half a year on. This is I've true. not, I, I have not mentioned that game once. It doesn't uh, matter, it's still an exclusive. I've, I've it's still it. an exclusive. Yeah, it's one exclusive, yeah. But and the rest the, of them are down the pack in terms of review scores. Down the pack? What, what, what kind of review score would you say makes a game not worth experiencing? Not worth experiencing? 
anything below a six or a six. Rise got about a six. Uh, yeah, well, no one's putting forward Rise as the pinnacle of next generation gaming. But I'm just saying, but there's um, what my main point was. There's no point in throwing out loads of exclusives if they're all rubbish. And I yeah, don't know. Do, they're yeah, all do you believe that's true? Yes, I do believe it's true. What's well, the point of throwing the, them? That all exclusives on the Xbox are rubbish. No, I don't. But I'm well, saying so why do you say these, these no, hyperbolic saying, points? Your point is this is great because we've got loads of games. It doesn't matter if they all suck. Yeah, but they the don't. Wii, they don't all suck. But you're chastising the Wii U for having no games. The Wii U's, but most of them are pretty damn good. I'm appealing now directly <laughs> to the fans out there because if you want a game that is fun and enjoyable that you're just going to fall in love with, it's going to be the Wii U. So you guys Thank can you talk. Yeah, sounds about right. A few, a few games. <laughs> so you, so you guys can talk and throw numbers at each other as much as you want. And I can be that Nintendo fanboy in the middle of you just sleeping in the corner. Just by the end of the day, it's all about the Wii U. Do you know what? Matt is right. But the I'm Wii right. U <laughs> will never be more than a secondary console to have alongside your Xbox One or PS4. Yeah. Why? Because it's weak. It doesn't have the power to match the other two. Having a Wii U but no Xbox One or PS4 is like choosing to lock yourself in a cage. Who seriously wants to miss out on the next Grand Theft Auto or sit in silence yeah. where all their friends are talking about can the Witcher 3? Can I just say, can I just say, are you saying, Bennett, that everyone should have a Wii U alongside either an Xbox One or that's, a PS4? Uh, I'm yeah, not sure right. that's entirely what he's saying. I think what he's saying is everyone should have either a PS4 or an Xbox One and then a Wii yeah. U if they feel like it. Yes. I'd like to point out that Bennett has finally taken this question back to its roots and we have finally kind of come back off that tangent a little bit and the main crux of the issue here is just the Wii is far too underpowered uh, to essentially... I'm not going to deny that. To say... To, to matter. I'm not going to deny that because at the end of the day we're not about those technological powerhouse advances. Right, but the question we've been posed is... <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We're about using these and any technology to have a fun interaction with games. Let me pose you a question, Matt. Yes. Has the gamepad helped or hindered the Wii U success? The gamepad being this console only innovation. I think it's neither. I don't think that it's either helped or hindered it. Because I think there's plenty of people that will sit down and will use the gamepad and love using it. Are you game. trying to tell me that a lot of the Wii U's issues aren't coming from the gamepad? Yes. Yeah. Right. I think, <laughs> I think, I think that, I think that the thing is. about opinions yeah. is that everyone is entitled to have them. Thank but you. when you get Thank stuff you. like that coming out saying that the Wii, the Wii gamepad hasn't hindered the Wii's performance, I think it's quite emblematic of how Nintendo fans do enjoy wrapping themselves in a bit of cotton ball from time to time. <laughs> I love using it. That's all I'm going to say. Do you love using it? Yes, I do. What, really? No, you don't. <laughs> what, I game? I, what game do I use it with? Yeah. I used it with Zombie Yank. Right. Well, yeah, because you had to. Because <laughs> I, I have, you have to use it. I have used, yeah, no, I do use it with Splatoon, and I have used motion them shots. I have tried them. But you hate them. I don't hate them. Yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> I said to you, and this is, uh, this is not fair, I said to you that the, the gamepad gives you more accuracy in that game. Do you use the motion controls? I do when I'm just sniping. Right. Right. But that's very, one very minute instance in one... I mean, it's a good game, but it's, I, I don't think Splatoon's a system seller, I'm sorry to say. Like, He's not don't. played it yet. Well, yeah, but looking at... After Super Smash Bros., nothing. Yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. But, yeah, I just, I, I think the more Matt talks, the more we see that uh, the Wii U doesn't really have much to offer in the technological innovation department, because the innovation that it tried, and it did try, and all credit to it for trying, hasn't worked. Why does your console have the best lineup of games, Adam Bennett? Well, the Xbox One has got the best lineup of games now, and it's going to get even better into the future. We know what we've already got. We've got the likes of Halo, the Master Chief Collection, which is like £40 nowadays, and you get four of the best shooters ever made for that. Online, regardless, and frankly, there's a mountain being made out of a molehill with regards to that. But even if you take online out of it, you're getting four of the best single-player FPS experiences all in one package. You can't knock it. you got Sunset Overdrive. It's a great little exclusive. It's a fun game. Maybe try hard. It's not a 10 out of 10, but it's worth experiencing. You've got games like that, but let's move on into the future. E3 2015. Here's what we've got confirmed. Crackdown. Eagerly awaited. Uh, 
spiritual sequel, so I suppose what's uh, going to be a sequel to the first Crackdown game, which was very uh, well critically received. Fable Legends, an evolution in the Fable franchise, looks like they're trying something new. Forza 6, Forza Horizon 2 was one of the most uh, critically acclaimed racing games of recent years, and I'm sure Forza 6 is going to continue in that vein. Gears of War 4, I'm not sure there's much more that needs to be said about that. Halo 5 Guardians, Quantum Break, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Scalebound, that's what we already know is going to be at E3 2015. Very quickly, Sony exclusive, Persona 5, Uncharted 4, Until Dawn, uh, Nintendo exclusive, Woody World, Xenoblade Chronicles, Mario Waker, Mario Maker, Star Fox, and a Shin Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem. I know which side I'm on. Okay, Matt Stevens. Well, I feel like, you know, Bennett's comments about how many uh, exclusive games in the Wii U up there are, it's a little bit lacking. Because what he's failed to mention, of course, I know he's focusing on E3, but what he's failed to mention is the previous lineup already on um, the Wii U. Like I said in my opening uh, statement, we've got Mario Kart 8, Super Mario Bros. U. 3D World, Smash, Wind Waker, High Warrior, Warriors, Splatoon, Monster Hunter, Pikmin 3, Mario Maker, Zelda U, I could go on, and I am going to go on, Star Fox, Yoshi Wind World. You know, these are amazing games. And they cover every single, you know, every single type of game that you would want to play. If you want to play a JRPG, you can go over there, and you will end up getting Shin Megami Tensei, Time Spy and Boom. If you want to play an action role playing game, you can go over and, you know, go for Monster Hunter or something along those lines. If you want to play a shooter, you can find Splatoon. If you want to play a racing game, Mario Kart. Mario Kart, one of the best racing games there is. Hey, Tom Powder. Well, great points from both the competitors. Um, but as you always, PS4 comes out on top. As always, we start with the best games. PS4 has Bloodborne, which Edge basically described as being the actual start of this generation, i.e. everything that came before it means squat. Uh, but not only that, but we have a number of other exclusives. You have Drive Club, you have Little Big Planet 3, Infamous Second Son, Killzone Shadowfall, basically games that are very diverse and offer completely different experiences each time round. But I don't want to just put the emphasis on the AAA titles. That's a very Xbox thing to do, and you'll see that his list is full of racing games and bro shooters. Of course, with the PlayStation 4, you have exclusive uh, indie games like Rezo Gun, which was hugely well received, and then indie games coming in the future, No Man's Sky, Rhyme, uh, and then other indie games that basically are just. The indie games offer different experiences, bigger, better experiences, not necessarily, but they offer more rewarding, artistic, and just frankly interesting experiences than the things you might find on my competitors' consoles. Upcoming things. This year looks a little sparse. I'll give that one to you. We have, however, more games than Bennett seems to have done in his research in the pipeline. The new God of War, which has been confirmed. The new Ratchet and Clank. There's also going to be, uh, obviously, the new Uncharted 4, which has been said. But it basically shows that Sony is capable of a diverse lineup full of genres and familiar faces. Um, and essentially, if you come with Sony, not only do you get those rich, rewarding first party experiences, we tend to value quality over quantity in that regard. But uh, you'll also get the third-party games which play the best and look the best on the PlayStation 4. And now open up the debate. Well, uh, some of the games you mentioned there, uh, like Resogun and games you've mentioned before, like Last of Us, by your own logic, they came out before Bloodborne, so they now mean diddly squat. This is very true. Um, That's a good point. No, it's not a good point. It's a ridiculous point. Just because Bloodborne's come out doesn't mean that the entirety of gaming history has been eradicated. Well, that's just one publication's view. Right, but it's, it's hogwash, isn't it? Oh really? I see you making a mouse out of my pill bed. <laughs> right, so no game that came out before Bloodborne is, is, <clears throat> is what is... No, what I don't think that's true, but that's just one publication's view. Right, well clearly... In the good. eyes of one, public, <clears throat> one publication, one well respected publication, Bloodborne is the best game on the market. Bennett seems to think that we're making mountains out of molecules well, just... on the issue of... Uh, Master Chief Collection. No, I would like I'd just like to pick up. I don't think Edge actually does think that Bloodborne is the best game on the market. I think that's actually not true. But just sorry, sorry, go on. So I would argue that actually, Tom here, you you love a good game of Smash. Yeah. Yeah. You love Smash. Yes. You love Mario Kart. Yes. I also love all of these games. That's true. My PS4. I've had it for. Look, the PS4 has been out less uh, over a year less than the Wii U, and my Wii U has half the library. Not mm. even that. Not even that. But did I say before it was about quality, not quantity? Yeah, you did. 
And that's what I think as well, that the PS4 has more of quality than the Wii U does. More quantity of quality. Mm -hmm. I think, Matt, uh, just one of the things you were saying about the Wii U's got everything that you'd want, it's got these kind of all different genres. Sure. I think this is another cotton wool example, because if people did want those games, they'd be buying them. It makes a good point, Matt. Everyone loves a good game with Mario Kart 8. Why aren't, Everyone, they, why aren't they buying it? Why aren't they buying it? Well, that's something that also eludes me. I'm here to get these people to buy it. I'm not here to say why they haven't bought it before. I'm here to say maybe that everyone it's a doesn't good... love a good game of Mario Kart. That's the problem. Nintendo have often been criticised of catering to their fans and to their fans alone. That's the issue with the directs. Um, and maybe it's time to face the facts that not everyone does love a game of Mario Kart. Not everyone does love a, a punch up on Smash, which is a shame. They are quality games. But the fact of the matter is, if, as Bennett said, if everyone loved them, they'd be buying the console. I think it's just a, a very awkward position for you to take of trying to position the Wii U as this big tent console that encompasses everyone when it's sold less than R2 consoles despite being on the market, what, a year longer? Yeah. Almost a year? Yeah. It's well, in fact a year longer. Yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say that it has, you know, a play, uh, you know, it doesn't have multiple options of these games, sure, but it has a game for each of these things that you could go to. But do you not think that comes back to my earlier comment about the Wii U being a secondary console that you'd buy after you've got your Xbox or your PS4? As long as you're buying it. The fact of the matter is, Matt, you said for racing games, come to Mario Kart. Yeah. There are lots of people that don't want Mario Kart as their hardcore racing game. They'll want Forza Horizon 2, Drive Club, Gran Turismo, something like that. Mario Kart just it's, it's Nintendo's kind of niche they fill, and that's about it. That's why it works better as a secondary console. As long as they're buying it. But they're not. Yeah, well, they're not. They're not buying <laughs> the Wii U it. still <laughs> hasn't hit 10 million units. That's why I'm here. Online gaming is pivotal to the overall experience. How does your console use online gaming, Matt Stevens? Well, the Wii U. Now, as I've mentioned, I'm sure, many times before, and I'm probably getting sick and tired of hearing this. There are actually many games that use online capabilities such as Mario Kart 8, Smash and Splatoon. And I'm going to focus on these three games. Now, these three have very smooth, uh, rich uh, content for you to play online. Splatoon is, the f is Nintendo's first multiplayer dedicated online game, which is a big step for Nintendo. And actually, if you read a lot of the reviews and what people are saying online, it's pu they've pulled it off extremely well. It's a big, it's a big, it's a really good time for you to step in and look at Nintendo and play Nintendo games online. Now, of course, Nintendo doesn't have a bigger, as as big um, online presence as these two. But however, what it does do is connect people to one another through something called Miiverse. Now, of course, Miiverse is like an online forum where players can talk to each other, draw pictures, communicate to each other, and just love the games that they're playing. Just say it again. Tom Powter. Well, I like that we're moving on to online, as I imagine it's a rather touchy subject for my other two uh, competitors, uh, as, of course, we know the Xbox One had a rather rough controversy with online. Always online when they first came out, but I'm sure my colleague Alan Bennett will try and tell you how they've managed to turn all around since then. PlayStation Plus remains the best value for money. With the instant game collection, it's literally free games in your pocket every month. And it's once again something else that Microsoft is playing catch-up on. Games with gold, catch-up. Price of the console, catch-up. DRM, catch-up. It's all catch-up. The PlayStation is the best place to play online. Party chat is a staple. The Xbox One had party chat fixed last month. Their party chat was so broken, Major Nelson and Larry Herb came out and fixed it in the April month uh, April month update, which for a console that prides itself on its online features is rather embarrassing. Sony also innovate and push consumer relations with their cross-buy feature, which utilises their online infrastructure to allow people to buy a game on the PS4 and get it for free on the PS3 or PS Vita. Alongside this, Sony innovate with remote play, another thing that their online experience works very well. In fact, it allows you to play a game on another system, on another screen, something that someone else has tried and not succeeded so well at. Basically, the PSN now rivals Xbox Live in terms of functionality. I will hold my hands up. PS3's online paled, absolutely paled in comparison to Xbox Live. But this is once again showing how Sony listens to fans and consumers and has made the online experience integral 
for the Sony uh, ecosystem. However, Sony doesn't just use the online infrastructure. We're also all about single player. So if you don't want to play online, don't feel like you have to. That's what being on PlayStation 4 is all about. Adam Benner. Well, just firstly, I think I've got a right of reply uh, to what Tom said about Microsoft, yes, famously in that car crash of an E3 2013 con conference said that Xbox One would be always online, but that never happened. So the impact of that on gamers has been absolutely zero. So from inside the fantasy world where Tom's launching that argument, he's won, but in reality it's a completely null point because it's just irrelevant, it's not something that actually happened. Moving on to Xbox Live right now. It's, a, it's just a fantastic experience. Games with Gold, I've, the games that I've got myself off Games with Gold, Rayman Legends, free. One of the finest uh, 2D platformers in recent years. Better, I would say, than New Super Mario Bros. U. Child of Light, that was the month after. Just, just, just wonderful games. And yes, you can get one, you do get wonderful games on PS Plus as well, but it, it, you really are splitting hairs between Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus. Yes, that's a compliment to PlayStation because they really have sorted it out from a PlayStation 3 online system that gave up your bank details, so it's a pretty big step forward from then. Uh, so yeah, you are splitting hairs. Both, both online systems are very good, but in terms of just games with gold and the experiences I've had on that, I would say that Xbox One narrowly edges in front. Okay, the debate is now open. Okay, so I'm going to jump out in front of you. All right. I believe Now... I want to just bring to light that for these both of these to play online, you have to pay a, a, a sum of not money. Mm -hmm. You have to pay a sum. Yeah. Of you get what you pay for that. But Wii U is free. You you want to play uh, online and not pay, have to pay any of these extra fees. It's free. Okay, fine. It doesn't have the extra features. But you want to just sit down, play a bit of online. You're not that often gaming. It's the perfect place. Okay. I won't pay for my online if I feel like playing a half-baked, half arsed out-of-touch version of online. Splatoon, which Matt has been heralding as the Wii U's online shooter came out this week, there's no voice chat. It's a team-based arena shooter with no voice chat. That is literally the epitome of Nintendo being completely out of touch. And I also want to bring up, Matt, that you brought, you brought up Mario Kart, Smash and Splatoon. Is that because they're the only games that you can play online on the Wii U? No. They're the only games you'd want to. Exactly. Seriously, I don't see how you can even defend it. Smash's lag is makes the game impossible. Just to play. while we're kicking the boot in, I think uh, you, Tom, made the point about this synchronised thing that PlayStation have got, and it is good. That is a good feature. And compare that to what Nintendo have got. Why? Uh, why does Nintendo Network not synchronise across yeah. 3DS and Wii U? Why wouldn't it make the most of the 3DS? Well, that's something that's going to be coming for, in a future year. It's way too yeah, late. Yeah, but what about now? I mean, sure, oh, sure, the <laughs> sure, the PS Vita is an, a just atrocious sales flop, but at least only had the guts to go out and try and innovate with it. Nintendo, yeah. was just, Nintendo, the thing is, when Nintendo brought the DS and the Wii out, you may remember, uh, you may also remember, they, they literally pitched it as, these two are going to be interconnected, and it basically never happened, mm. and it still has never happened. Mm. I'm not going to turn around and say, you know, uh, the Wii U is not the best online place to go. Now, day over. <laughs> now, but it's the place where you can go and not have to pay. That's the thing. But I feel like, and I'm sure Adam does as well, we get our money's worth. Yeah, you get your money back in the free games. I mean, yeah, that's debatable. How well, many yeah, let's, yeah, let's no, 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 okay, let's have that debate then. How many of these games How many have free you... games do you get on the Wii U? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've actually had many. But, demos. not actually always demos. I think you remember that a few, there were a few times where you bought a game and actually they just give you a free game just because you bought it. And they do a variety of offers. And they're full games, they're not indies as well. You've got to remember this. But I've just forgot what I was saying, so we can cross Well, just, well, well yeah, just to... Just give me another just, stab in the... Just, <laughs> <laughs> well, just to come on to that point, yeah, I think what you're referring to is what the Wii U did with Mario Kart 8. And, yes. I, and I agree that that, is, that was a really cool thing for them to do, but I want to actually ask you a question directly. Do you think that Nintendo would have done that if the Wii U and its games had sold as well no. as PlayStation and Xbox? No. No. <laughs> no, it wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have happened. And the only the only reason they did it was a desperate attempt to shore up sales for a sinking console that didn't work. 
And these games, right. these games, these games that you can get for free are games that are so good that people aren't buying them. Yeah. Well, Isn't literally it? next month on the PlayStation, I'm not, I'm not sure about games we go, but I'm sure it'll be equally as good. We're getting Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes for free. And Metal Gear Solid Five is literally coming out in September, so that's just a. You, you might not like it, but that's a hugely popular game. I'm sure Resogun sure was sure free sure at launch, and for a long time was the most critically acclaimed exclusive on any system. Resogun, of course, means sure Doodly Squat because it's the pre Bloodborne era. But however, however, at least, at least, at least, Nintendo hasn't just lost all confidence from gamers. Where Microsoft, however, turned round at that E3 conference and completely dropped a bomb and lost faith of many people. I'm going to jump in, apologies, I'm going to jump in and uncharacteristically offend Mr. Bennett. <laughs> How can you say that Microsoft has lost the faith when the Xbox One is already outselling the Wii U? Well, with less than a year on the market underneath the Wii U. I can't. Microsoft, well, Microsoft the, did lose the customers. Yeah, but, but they're bringing them back. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I the, whole, that. the whole point of what you were saying about Sony, it listens to customers. Say what you like about what Xbox did at E3 2013, and we all did. I did. I, w I was just as annoyed as anyone about this, the bollocks, DRM, and always online stuff. It was stupid. I was leaning towards PlayStation 4. I bought a PlayStation 4, but I went back on it, and I got an Xbox One instead, because I felt there were more games that I wanted to play. But what you say about listening to gamers, that's exactly what Xbox did. They, gamers said, we don't want this always, this always online, we don't want these DRMs, so they said, okay, you don't have them then. As well, Nintendo also listened to their, listened to their fans. You know, they turn around and Well, it's to easy to listen to such a small crowd. Yeah, well maybe that's what the people want to be part of. Right. Why would I have enjoyed your community? <laughs> a community? No, yeah. maybe, maybe people want to be a, a part of a community that actually is listened to. And um, Sony, listen, that's, yeah, that's, that's the whole reason we are double your sales, because they listen to the consumer. If, if Nintendo listened to their fans, there'd be another F-Zero game now. There'd exactly. be another Metroid. Metroid yeah. Who knows that that might still be coming next week? How will you feel if Miyamoto gets up on stage and says the only way you can play Star Fox is with the gamepad's motion controls? Uh, I'd probably be fine with that, because... Oh, so that's a because. blatant <laughs> lie, I want this on camera, that is a lie. Because? On our 8 Brit Reacts video, you better make sure you remember that, and see what he does. Yeah, do. Um, yeah, I mean... I mean, what can I say at the end of the day? Attack each other. Oh, I think we're coming to the end. Yeah, yeah I think uh, we've, we've covered the online section, unfortunately, for some. <laughs> Just before we finish this debate, each of our candidates is going to give a closing statement. First, Matthew Stevens. Well, there you have it. If you want a game console that's focused on having the most fun games that you could possibly play, then I think you, you guys need to look at the Wii U. Really consider it. Sure, you might buy an Xbox One, you might buy a PS4, but always consider that the Wii U's there and really, the most fun you're going to have is right here on That Wii U. Thank you, guys. And now, Tom Powter's closing statement. Well, I'd like to start by saying thanks for joining us with this debate. Time magazine once said of the PS4, you're still buying a promise, but for once it feels like a promise made from solid, well-trodden ground. Well-trodden indeed. For over 20 years, PlayStation has been a leading name in video games, delivering some of the highest quality gaming experiences ever with some of the most loved gaming characters of the past two decades. With Microsoft, you're buying a promise of catch-ups and a diluted vision. With Nintendo, you're buying into a promise of a sinking ship. You know, there's a reason why the console has shot off the starting line. It's because it's the best option out there for gamers right now. The PS4 has everything you need, want and anticipate. While it's true that the best of this generation is yet to come, the best answer for you if you're looking for experienced, nuanced game design is right here with PlayStation. And finally, Adam Bennett's closing statement. Well, obviously I hope I've done enough to persuade those of you who are sitting on the fence to get an Xbox One. 
I won't deny that there are huge advantages to the PlayStation 4 and the Wii U, but the reason I find the Xbox One's case so compelling is because it is so balanced. If you want TV and video apps you covered, if you want a more active and innovative gameplay experience, then the Kinect has you covered, but most importantly, if you want great games, then you are more covered with the Xbox One than anything else. Blockbuster AAAs, innovative indies, gorgeous racers, jaw-dropping open worlds, nostalgic platformers and engrossing RPGs are all available along with so, so, so much more on the Xbox One. There is a reason the PlayStation 4 leapt off the starting line. It's because it was the best console on the market in 2013. There's a great future ahead on the Xbox One. I hope you'll be a part of it, and I'll see you on Xbox Live. So there you have it, our first ever 8-Brit debate. Who do you think won this debate? Let us know in the comments below. Please subscribe to our channel, give us a like. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.